You guys, I'm here with my man, Christos Yagos, UFC 262, Dar's Choke of the Night. Could have been Dar's Choke of the Year, to be honest. And Performance of the Night bonus, and it wasn't a regular Performance of the Night, it was the... Texas size bonus. Fat Texas version. Who got that again? Who argued for that? Uh, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson, thank you for his bonus. He's super stoked about it. <laughs> um, so we're here, you guys. Amazing Dar's Choke of a very tough opponent, Sean Soriano. For those who don't know, Christos lives here in the South Bay. He's been training with us and other local amazing instructors for quite some time now. And just he's just known as like the scrappy, very talented, very athletic, very hardworking. Like everything he got, he earned. So after the Dars, I was going to mention it in our a breakdown that we did for um, the fights last weekend. But I was like, no, Christos gets his own breakdown because he's been clawing his way to the top. And, uh, and here he is now with an amazing technique, amazing performance. So let's get to that second round. The first round was a little rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the first round, he, he hit me with some big shots. And um, I mean, I, I thought I hit him too, but he gave me the stanky leg a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I, I knew how to dig deep in it and pull something off. So. And that's kind of where the crystals always has the advantage. Like when it comes to heart, right? Like he's got the heart. So he came back in the second round and just brought everything with him. And so he attempted to, you shot on him, yeah, I he shot threw him. you, let's show that in slow motion. So you tried to shoot, I went he here. wizard, he threw, you I land. Used my momentum to pick his hips up. And we kept going, he kept moving to the center here. So now, you ended up in side control, I think it was on this side, in side control on him, yeah. after the throw and the, and the reversal of the throw. And then what happened? He, he's, I had this underhook so he couldn't uh, escape, but he started fishing for his underhook and getting to his knees. When he started going to his knees, he reached my leg and I knew his arm was close to his uh, neck. So I wrapped around and snuck in the here. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Look at that. Go back, do that again. Come back the other way. So he was here. He ran around. Boom. He punched in and got the darts on the opposite hand. And I tried to stand up. And so I knew I had to grab his legs. So I reached my hips in and flipped them backwards. Boom. And everything was a wrap from here. And now bring the camera over the top right here so you can see how miserable my life is. You guys, loose it up, bro, it's me. It's okay. <laughs> you guys, this, it looks like an anaconda, but it's not. It's a Dar's choke, right? And how do we know the difference? Anaconda originates in the neck, connects in the armpit. Dar's originates in the armpit, connects near the neck. So the origin versus the connection or the insertion, that's how you know the difference. This is absolute Dar's from the bottom with the leg trapped. Very rare to capture and keep this right here. And I would like to defend, but I can't. So as here, he's pulling the leg, he's driving his hips and pulling the choke. That's a sealed deal. Sean passed out, then you felt it. You knew how, when yeah, did you yeah. know? When he, uh, he, he, he had body went limp, and then once the referee tapped me, I was like, it's done. Oh, it's done. Oh, too good. Okay, let's talk about some of the implications here. So why was this so spectacular? And why, is he, why does Crystal get his own Gracie breakdown? Here's why. When he was in side control on this side, here's what I expected to happen. Because Christos' his Dars are known, right? And here, South Bay, the Dars is, you roll with him, you're gonna get Dars choke. So I, I, here's what I expected, the normal Dars, which means underhook, come up. We expected the near side Dars right there. Like that's Dars 101. And you see in the match, as he gets the underhook, Christos purposely puts his arm over the head right here. He did this. And that's pretty much how you invite the Dars perfectly. Because now when he punches through with his hand, bringing the Dars through, oh, it lands. Literally, it's already in place. Yeah, yeah, the guy yeah. starts to defend, and he's good to go. That's what we expected. What was so remarkable is it's almost like, and this guy he's rolling with is, is, is no slouch, right? Sean Soriano is very talented MMA and coach and fighter. So he comes through. But instead of taking the easy win right here, Christos ran around like almost 180 degrees to the other side. Come over here, champ. So look, the underhook comes in, he gets up, he runs now, and now he punched it on the other side. And that's what was so remarkable. Let's go back actually right here, back down. So as I underhook and he runs around, this is what's so amazing is that he shot on the other arm. Why does that make sense? Because if I'm Sean, I'm expecting the Adars on the underhooking arm. I'm not expecting a full run around to the other side. Okay, and that's where everything gets thrown up. Now, in terms of defense, is what Sean would like to do after the leg gets caught. So he stood up, trying to pull out, his leg gets caught. He falls down and they roll. Now, the normal defense from here, you guys, from the inverted Dars essentially, let go of this please, oh, this part. Like yes, it. keep the arms. A normal Dars right here, defense. What Sean would like to do is open his shoulders, drive up, cross this arm across the body, and then pronate his hips. But in order for me to do that, look at this leg. I had to free my leg. And the problem was, when Christos has that leg, number one, it can't reach north. Number two, even if I could, I can't square my hips up to get to a safe position, so I'm always in choking position. So Dar's defense, your arm has to cross the center line. And right now I can't cross the center line because Christos has full control over it. Similarly, if you catch the Dar's from standard side control, 
Watch. As he shoots in, he locks it up right here. What's my defense, you guys? Make sure you use your vine right there. Look, my defense is slightly prone. Reach north. Roll and get this arm across his center line. Where was my arm? It was here. It has to cross to here. Now I can supinate a little bit. Now, even though a north-south choke is kind of booming here, I would turn my chin and start to defend, bring my head inside. But in both cases, my arm's ability to go from one side of Christos' body to the other side, that's what has to happen in order for the arm to clear and for my neck to be free. And the way Christos set it up by running around the corner, catching the opposite arm and neck, and then trapping the leg preemptively, that was the key to the whole thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, in the moment, you were like, leg. Grab. Grab, <laughs> connect, like robotic, locked it. Guy tried to flip and turn and Christos was locked in fully, you guys, all because, and that's the whole point, is sometimes, especially at the level he's competing, you can't take the easy win that's right there looming in front of you. When that underhook came in and it was big and there's a Darce right there, had he gone for that one, all of Sean's defensive mechanisms would have fired. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because it's the conventional Darce. The, you, you, you look like on, on, on TV, it looked like his response was delayed. Like you got around, Definitely. shot it, locked it, trapped the leg, and then he responded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I had it locked, I feel like he didn't see it coming at all. And so when he stood up to his feet, that's when I just snagged the leg. You were so, fully in there, fully yeah. locked, you guys. And that's what's so beautiful is that because he took the less conventional route to the Darce, the opponent in this situation, their defensive systems were not primed, were not even ready to begin activating, to start responding to the threat. They had to first identify what threat is this. And that's what's so beautiful. That was so natural that he just flowed in the direction and around the corner. Well, man, you guys, very exciting. And uh, I was like, oh man, I gotta do this. And I was like, man, I can't do it until Christos gets home. <laughs> so here we are. And then after the fight, you said, man, you might wanna fight with who? Donald Cerrone. Uh, I think I put on a great performance and he wants to retire at 155. Uh, no better chance than this guy right here to uh, step in as a big fan of the sport and a big fan of Donald Cerrone. I'd love to. The most that respectful, fight. the most respectful challenge ever, too. It's yes, like, listen, yes. he's a huge fan of Donald. You said, I think in the interview, you were like, man, I've been a fan of his since Forever. him and Connor, since yeah. day one, like since they've been fighting. And uh, that would be awesome to watch because we know, we know Cerrone's style. And now we know Christos' style. It's go, even the first round. You can give him the first round, but he's coming back with everything he's got. So it's going to be a war until the end. It's always like that with Christos. So yeah, in order to finish me, you have to finish me. In order to beat me, you have to finish me. So I'm, I'll almost stop coming. Yeah, and he's going to do it. If they don't give him Donald, he's going to gobble up someone else in the meantime. And then hopefully, eventually, we'll get to that. But I think you deserve it, bro. Super proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming by the house for the breakdown, you guys. Gracie, breakdown. Christos, Yagos. Made it happen, we're super proud of them, and everyone knows what's going down. The 32 principles, we saw a lot of them working right here. It's coming out very soon. Listen to what Tom DeBlas had to say about the 32 principles, he knows what's up. With the 32 principles of jiu-jitsu, you get a, a better understanding of why jiu-jitsu is the way it is. So if you wanna go faster, you go need to slow, slow down. down. <laughs> what's up guys, this is Tom DeBlas. Uh, owner of Ocean County Jiu-Jitsu. I've been training Jiu-Jitsu for over two decades. I've been a black belt for 13 years, and I was sitting home the other night, and Henry Gracie messaged me, and he sent me his new project, The 32 Principles of Jiu-Jitsu. He asked me if I wanted to take a look, and if I, if I took a look, if I liked what I saw, would I be willing to tell everyone, tell the world what I thought about it? And at first, you know, I didn't think too much about it, but as I looked at it, and as I got into it, I realized what a great project this was. As we all know, Jiu-Jitsu is very, very hard. 32 Principles Jiu-Jitsu takes this conceptual approach to Jiu-Jitsu that helps everybody learn easier. Coming up through the ranks, I've seen Jiu-Jitsu transform. It, it used to be only the strong survive to where everybody could find their place on the mats now and find a way to survive. 32 Principles Jiu-Jitsu certainly helps you to do that. I promise you and I assure you. Over the last few months, Henry and I have developed a relationship and this guy is very passionate about everything he does and he's, he brings that passion to this development that he made for everybody to see, for the world to learn easier. It doesn't matter if you're a white belt, blue belt, purple, brown, or black belt. I took great pleasure in looking at it and learning about it. And for sure, I'll take some of the principles that I learned there and apply it to my own teaching and my own learning. As we know, learning truly begins when you're a black belt, I feel. And up until that level, you're just learning how to learn. You're learning how to take everything in. So this is something I highly recommend. Make sure you get your hands on it. It's gonna make your journey much easier. It's gonna make your learning much easier. Not only easier, I believe you will retain the information much more. 
because it's very hard to retain everything we're learning in jiu-jitsu. We learn so much, and our mind can only hold on to so much. But with the 32 principles of jiu-jitsu, you get a, a better understanding of why jiu-jitsu is the way it is. You know, what are we doing? Why are we doing the things that we're doing? And this is going to help you a great deal. I promise you, I assure you, I give you my word. Once again, this is Tom DePlace. I hope you love the 32 principles of jiu-jitsu just as much as I did. Have a great one.